Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod and to another game dev tutorial with Unity and C Sharp. Now, many games feature some sort of dialogue system, especially RPGs or heavy story-driven experiences. So I figured many of you would be interested in learning how to make a simple but flexible dialogue system, easy to implement into whatever game you're currently developing. By the end of the video, you'll have something that looks like this, with a cool auto-typing effect, some fading in animation to make things look more crisp, but of course can be tweaked to fit the style of your creation and some sound effects, so player input feels more satisfying. So I have a little scene set up with two characters face to face. Let's get them chatting. First of all, we need to set up our UI. In other words, our text and continue button. Now we can of course use Unity's basic UI, but I highly recommend you try out a free UI package from the asset store called Text Mesh Pro, which for those of you who don't know, is an awesome tool to get crisp and highly customizable text. Once that's been downloaded and imported into Unity, I can now head over to Create, UI and choose Text Mesh Pro Text. I can now tweak my text's visuals and placements, but before that, I'll make sure my UI scale mode on the canvas is set to scale with screen size. I can then type my reference resolution. This will make sure our UI behaves correctly on different screen sizes. I'll now grab my text and call it dialogue text, and holding down shift and alt, snap my text to the side of the screen and move it down a little. Now I want my text to be aligned to the left and smoothly move down, so I'll change my alignment accordingly. You can then play around with the font, the spacing between each letter, word and line. You can even give your text a drop shadow by tinkering around with the underlay settings. Once you're satisfied with how your text looks, it's time to do some simple programming. I'll create a new c -sharp script called Dialog and open it up inside of my scripting editor. First of all, I'll grab a reference to my Text Mesh Pro Dialog text. But to do so, I first need to head up here and add a new namespace called TM Pro. Now I can play around with everything Text Mesh Pro related via script. So without further ado, I'll create a public variable of type Text Mesh Pro U GUI called text display. I'll also create a public string array named sentences, which, as the name implies, will hold all the sentences that make up our dialogue. Lastly, I'll make a simple private int variable called index. Let's start by getting our text display to actually display our sentences. We also want to put in place that cool little typing effect. To do so, I'll make a new coroutine called type. For those who don't know, Coroutines basically act as functions, but all the code inside it doesn't need to be run immediately. In other words, by typing yield return u wait for seconds, all code that comes after this line will be delayed by this amount. So I'll make a for each loop inside this coroutine and get that loop to run an amount of times equal to the amount of letters making up our current sentence. So sentences index.toCar array. Yep, quirky syntax. And so inside the loop, I'll add a single letter to my text display and then wait a few milliseconds before repeating that. In this case, it's best we create a public float variable called typing speed instead of hard coding that value. All I must now do is start the coroutine in my start function. I can now head into Unity, create a new empty game object called Dialog Manager, and drag and drop my dialog script onto it. I'll also drag and drop my text display inside that empty slot. Write a few sentences in my sentences array, and type in some small value for typing speed. 
Hitting play, we should have our first sentence auto-type itself smoothly. But for now, we have no way to make any progress in this dialogue. So let's create a continue button. I'll create a new text mesh pro text, tweak its visuals and add a button component to it. I'll give it a slight yellow tint when my mouse hovers over it and make sure to set navigation to none so we don't get any odd behavior. In short, I want the next sentence in my array to auto-type itself whenever I hit this continue button. So back in MonoDevelop, I'll create a new public function called next sentence. I'll first of all make sure that we haven't yet come to the end of our dialogue. So simply make an if statement checking whether index is less than the number of elements in the sentence's array minus one. Because remember, arrays start at zero. If that's the case, then let's start by incrementing index of one. We also want to reset our text display so sentences don't stack and of course start our type coroutine so a new sentence slowly displays itself. I'll also make sure to reset the text when the dialogue is complete. Now all this should work smoothly, let's try it out. I'll add an on-click event to my continue button, drag and drop my dialogue manager and call the nick sentence function. Hitting play, you'll see that my dialogue smoothly displays itself, and I can hit continue to get a new sentence. However, I can currently spam click the continue button and get some buggy looking results. An easy way to prevent this from happening is enabling and disabling the continue button at the right time. So I'll make a public game object variable called continue button and in my update function make an if statement checking whether what my text is currently displaying is equal to my current sentence. If that's the case then we know the whole sentence has been typed out and so we can display the continue button by typing continue button dot set active true. When we hit that continue button though we will immediately hide it by stating continue button dot set active false. This way the player can't spam click it, miss out on the story and bug the game. We'll also hide that continue button when the dialogue has ended. We can now head back into Unity, drag and drop the continue button in the inspector, disable it and hit play. And things should work wonderfully. Now, when multiple characters are having a chat, to make clear to the player who is talking using this dialogue system, you can simply type the name of the character in capital letters. Or make a little talk bubble and change its position depending on who's talking. Alright, now that we have our dialogue system up and running, let's try juicing it up. A great way to do so is by adding some animations. So I'll head over to Window, Animation, and create a new animation for my text display. I'll call it idle and leave it as is. You can of course get it to scale ever so slightly, but don't overdo it. Let's then make a second animation called change text. I'll get my text to fade in, so with the record mode on, I'll set the alpha to completely transparent at first and slowly remove that transparency. You can of course make all kinds of animations. You're actually able to animate almost all of these text mesh pro settings, which is pretty awesome. Inside my animator, which you can find under window animator, I'll create a new trigger parameter called change. I'll then left click on my idle animation and choose make transition. Now I want my text to play this change animation when I say so via script. So whenever my change parameter is triggered. So I'll simply click this little plus sign and add a play condition for this animation. Since I only have one parameter, change trigger will automatically be selected for me. I'll also make a transition between my change animation and idle animation and leave the settings of that transition at default. Okay, back in my script, I'll make a public variable of type animator called text display anim and then set my trigger, in other words, play my animation as soon as I click the continue button. Now, note that you can create a fade out animation and get that to play before displaying a new sentence with another coroutine. 
All right, as usual, I'll drag and drop my text display inside the empty animator slot in the inspector and test things out. And normally your text should be that much more awesome thanks to your animation. Lastly, you can add a little pop sound whenever you hit continue by creating a private variable of type audio source called source and grabbing a reference to that audio source in the start function. Then type source.play in the change text function to play whatever sound may be attached to your audio source. In my case, a little pop sound. And now I can add my audio source with the pop sound quickly made using Audacity to my dialogue manager game objects. Hit play and hear that satisfying little pop sound. And that will mark the end of this video. As you can see, it's a simple system, but one that can be expanded on and can, even in its current simplistic state, bring to life many cool story twists and dialogues. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and or learned something new. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's so appreciated. And also consider following me on Twitter for character design posts and video updates. You can also join the small yet cool Blackthorn Prod Discord server to partake in art slash game dev contests and chat with fellow game creators. Lastly, if you're interested in listening to a cool game creation talk I had roughly a month ago with two other devs, check out the link to that podcast in the description. With that said, stay tuned, cheers!